Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today's topic is rabbit holes and how to avoid them. Because, you know, hedgehogs don't really belong into rabbit holes. And we can spend our time more wisely. So, I think that's a problem every map analyst and every reverse engineer knows, especially from uh, the time when you just started out. Um, it's you know, a time waster that you dive into the code and you don't get out of it. Like you're cluelessly searching for the things that might be interesting and you don't find them, say. Um, there are some habits that can help you to avoid it. If you're a beginner, check this out. All right, the sample we will be looking at is a card game, maybe. <laughs> um, if you're a beginner in map analysis, um, what you might do first is checking this file, um, let's say in Detected Easy or something similar. It tells you it's a .NET file, and then you go straight to the NSPY because you know the NSPY is a .NET decompiler and uh, let's load the file there you check the entry point and you see oh wow this is initializing some kind of well graphical user interface probably and um, well, if you check the strings here and the method names and the class names, it really looks much like a card game. Right? It says something like other player cards received. Um, there are some, well, game states. Um, the game server is, you know, it really looks like an innocent game. Now, uh, I got the sample because someone on Melvitips.com asked me uh, or not me, asked in a thread um, for help um, analyzing the sample because they knew it was Melvit but could not find the malicious code inside of this supposedly card game and uh, didn't know where to look for the malicious code. Now what can you do to avoid rabbit holes like this one? That's actually a rabbit hole. If you now start looking for the malicious code by just you know clicking all of the uh, classes and methods, you will get lost in one very soon. Um, the first thing, and that's like the person who asked about this file, they, they did this um, correctly. They ha uploaded it to any run, or you can use any other automatic analysis system that like dynamically analyzes the samples and any run will provide an overview to you what the sample does on the system. So these are the first things you can use to get a starting point for your analysis. Right? The first thing you do is you get some kind of overview and several starting points to look for more. Now. Any run will already tell you very valuable things. For instance, it seems like the um, process will start, um, will persist using a task, the task scheduler, and it seems that it um, injects into a legitimate file called recservices.exe. So, that's very common for .NET malware to start a legitimate .NET file and then inject into it. And this one, if you check on the, let's see where I find it, the threads tab, you see it says the network Trojan was detected and that there's agent tester exfiltration in the rec services.exe. So we can already assume it somehow unpacks an agent Tesla executable and injects it into rec services.exe. Um, if we click on the um, process for it, 
you see uh, also Agent Tesla was detected. You can click on that uh, to get more information. And action looks like stealing of personal data. So here is some folder that has was touched by the file. Called, yeah, it seems like some kind of user data for she dot. Um, and it changes the auto run value in the registry for some arbitrarily named .exe file in the app data folder. So yeah, that's pretty obviously malware. And now we need to find out what else is happening. The next thing I also like to look at at the very beginning is virus total. Um, not only the detection rate is interesting, of course, with a detection rate like this, it's pretty sure that this is malware. Um, and it looks to be consistent with Agent Tesla since there's some kind of password stealer um, indicated here. We have some Agent Tesla named detections as well. And some say it's like cryptic, so it's packed. Um, crypt cryptic means packed. Furthermore, the comments in the community tab, um, they will state some more uh, automatic analysis systems. One of them is in teaser, which also creates a report. And the interesting part is that it will try to um, tell you what kind of mother family it is based on the codes it found in there. So codes and strings. Um, the in teaser report looks like this. Um, that's the original file. And here it just didn't find anything special, but the dynamic execution found the memory module that it detected as Agent Tesla. You see it here. Click on that. It has uh, almost 2,000 genes uh, that are supposed to be ad Agent Tesla and also in this services.exe. So take note of that, write that down, services.exe, our interesting service to get the payload. Now, we already know quite a lot of things here. Um, but how do we find the interesting part to, to um, continue with our analysis, right? It's, um, what I suggest is first um, use a hex editor and just scroll through the file if it's not too big. If it's too big, um, you may want to check it out with something like Portex Analyzer first to see interesting areas of the file that you can read. Let's see what Portex Analyzer finds. All right, so this is the visualization of the file. Um, firstly, this is a .NET file that it has two kinds of resources. Um, Podex analyzes a PE viewer and parser. It will show um, the this part of the um, image shows um, structures related to the PE file. So the resources marked green here, they belong to the PE format. And you can already see in the byte plot that this looks like an icon. And indeed, if you check the resources here in um, resource hacker, you see that this is indeed the icon that Windows would um, display if you append a .exe extension to the file. Now, that's not that interesting for us. Um, what is interesting is this blue area here, because blue in the byte plot means visible ASCII. So uh, it's actually two blue areas, but this is uh, a larger one. And we should check those for strings that are interesting. A lot of times, um, 
malware may pack the payload into a big string or in this case uh, the second thing that's interesting is this area here because that's high in entropy so it has some probably something packed into this area how do we check those and we can use the hex editor and we can also use um, strings exe from this internet right okay let's check it in the hex editor we could go approximately to the area where we found the um, blue stuff that's here well that looks like these are method and class names for the donut assembly and um, strings can be quite a bit hard to read in the hex editor. Oh, what's that? Well, it looks weird, pretty weird. Um, it says quotes on life and repeats that all over. Well, definitely something I would take note of because why would it do that? Uh, let's scroll to the beginning this seems to be a .NET resource right? um, you see here the header of the resource and the advantage of using hex editors you see like the structure around those strings um, so we can um, check the .NET resources with dnspy for instance and if you do which is also what I recommend doing before diving into code um, run strings.exe from this internal on your file pipe that into a txt file then check them just scroll through um, and here you can read the interesting font so see if there's anything you might want to take a look in the code later uh, that um, things you want to look out for if you check on .NET files which um, do process injection is something like invoke um, entry point um, get method and so on and we can see something like that here. Uh, also, here's an invoke, just reverse. So it seems like these are interesting starting points for us to search for the code that does the injection or uh, unpacking of the payload. And yeah, that's what we're gonna do now. Now it's the time to check the code. Firstly, the section of the resources, we saw a reverse invoke, right? I think I would just show you several ways to find this uh, particular um, code of interest here. The three ways for it. Firstly, the resources, check the resources. And what you can see is there's this big quotes and live stream. First, note the name, write it down, SAS. That's the resource with that string. Secondly, we have this image, which is not really a useful image. Um, if you see an, an image like that anywhere in the file, most of the time this is packed code or a packed um assembly disguise as, as a kind of a disguise. It's not really a disguise because it's pretty obvious if you see it and if you saw it once you will recognize it again. So this is how an image looks if you just um, put them some random crap into it. right? Um, so both of these are quite interesting because there's always a reason behind those things. Why would you put someone in this quotes in life here? Um, now, what you can do, uh, you need to find the location in the code that uses these resources, right? So you go into the properties resources, there's the resource manager for the .NET file, and then you find getters and setters 
for the resources. So that's the first way to find the code. Here they are. That's the image. And SAS, that's the quotes and live stream. And then you right click analyze, you will find uh, just by, and there you see uh, a method named rate that calls this resource and do, does something to it. Second way to find this, that was the first using resources. Second way you could have found this is using the um, search function. We already know this uh, reverse invoke way was kind of weird. Um, so what we search for is that. Um, invoke is... Um, that, right? You say, uh, I want to search for number or string. Uh, it's like this reverse invoke. And now you also get the rate function. So using that, you could have found the um, interesting method here. The last thing you could have done, um, we know from the community comments that there is a Yara signature match on reverse base 64 encode exe. Well, wow, that's quite interesting. So what you can do is the rule link. You can download the rule, right? You click on raw and save that. Onto your desktop, save it. And then you run Yara on that file. So um, Yara, we tell it our rule set, and we say this game. So let's put the minus s there. What it does, it, is sh it shows the strings that match, and then it also shows um, where it matches, the location, and it's 24C2E. So open this up in the hex editor. Where is the game? Here. And go to that location. Go to... Or C to E. Bam. And that's where you land. Here. That's uh, obviously some kind of. Well, it says this is a um, reverse base 64 encoded EXE string. This part here. So you know, okay, here's some kind of base 64 string, but this live on quotes is in between. It's quite weird. So you could have seen that this is an interesting area for you um, this way. And then later on got to that method here. So now the interesting part, what does it actually do? Um, it will get this resource and replace the quotes on live with a let's save the resource first that's the resource we can right click save we save it as txt because it's a big string and then we open it up in yeah in notepad plus plus and do the same just replace this with a place all And that's our string, basic C4 string. Now we know it's reversed, so um, where is it? What does it do? Uh, it here's the reverser. This method actually reverses the basic C4 string, 
and then it does a conversion from base64. Well, we can easily do the same. So I prefer to do this with Python. So then we will open our file for reading and say um, this is read lines first line. Let's print the first hundred characters. Um, and I want the first three strings to disappear because it seems to start with the non-character stuff. And then we have that that looks better and I want to reverse this as well and we get a reversed string that looks good and now we just decode that and print that to file base64 we can say uh, B64 decode and then our reverse string and we save that to decode it so and then I open this file new file called dump for writing and it needs to be a binary file because that's what we have right now um, let's check it. Decode it looks like that. And yeah, that, that's about right. Um, this is the M that, MZ and here's the DOS sub message. So it looks correctly. Uh, and we write this decoded to the output file named dump and exit. Now we don't need to uh, do closing on the streams in case we are Python um, Python program and we don't need to close it because when I exit Python it will also close the streams here. Yeah. Okay here's the dump file and as well as with the um, original file this card game file we will do the same thing and just put it into Podex Analyzer for visualization and strings.exe to check where the interesting parts of the file are. But also we know um, without that what's interesting from uh, what is being called, which method is being called. You can see that here. Um, so check that, and if you already find the stuff that's interesting, um, then it's good. But otherwise, I recommend the same thing, that you check it out in a hex editor, check the strings, and so on. So we know it calls a method named like that. So we already know it's quite obfuscated. And it's in this class and in this namespace. Um, Let's drag and drop it in here. That I'm foul. Maybe it's our agent Tesla code. It's a DLL. And this looks quite awful too. For that. Um, the method, the relevant method is this. So we find it here. That looks obviously awful. So we need to deobfuscate it. Um, but take note of how it looks like because this seems to be the only method with three strings as parameter and void. So you can kind of uh, find it later when you um, use d for dot um, with this pattern. 
where it's a dump. Here. So now we have a clean dump. There it is. <laughs> it's a bit confusing. Okay. This is called Sparta. <laughs> and this one is the method we are looking for because as I said, it's um, string, 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 void. So that's the method and that looks about right. Um, so we need to know what it does here. If you check out um, this, it seems to get something from the resources. And then it extracts some kind of pixel data from it. And then it does some form of um, XOR decryption using this array and this string as a kind of um, password. So you could copy all of this code and put in the, um, the strings from the caller, but it's far easier if you let the Mavi do this dynamically, the unpacking of the payload. Um, it takes less time at least. <laughs> And we already know th this should be interesting for you because here's a sleep. So this uh, sample waits 38 seconds before it does it. So just running it and running some kind of like mega dumper will not get you the payload. You need to wait. Um, so let's do this. We, we will start Process Explorer. Furthermore, you know where the payload is located in this rec services.exe. So that's what we will wait for. We will um, append.exe extension, run it. And right now it doesn't do anything at all. The uh, CPU is not spiking here. It should have some, some CPU usage um, that's now, it's now sleeping. So let's check out Megadumper. We run with administrator privileges. And once it has started executing the payload, we should be able to get it. If you run Megadumper now on this, ah, now it starts. There is rec services.exe. That's what we want. And we run the dump by Mega Damper. So note the directory that the files are located. Since it um, just ran some .NET executable from the .NET framework, it also put the dumps in there. An easy way to get there is to right click and go to location. And now I think we should uh, kill the malware process. So and we should find the dump in there. There they are. Continue. So, and here we are. That's the payload. That's it, everything for today. Um, you can also put this into um, the Inspire for analysis. It seems to be packed with Confuser X. I didn't verify it, but um, in teaser says it is here. So you might want to use some kind of um, deobfuscator like deconfuser X. No, I think it's unconfuser X 
or no conf no fuse X. <laughs> Anyways, you will find the obfuscators for this type of obfuscation. And then you can analyze the payload if you want to, but well, Agent Tesla is analyzed already. So, um, yeah, that's it. All right, so to summarize, what can we do to avoid rabbit holes? What are good habits? Well, you should check every file that you get first for strings. Um, and secondly, check out in a hex editor for interesting parts. If the file is very large, use a visualization to find the interesting areas. Um, and if you, well, the advantage of these is they are not dependent on any file type. So um, usually because um, if you use, for instance, IDA to check the reference strings view, that's not a replacement of um, this internal strings.exe because the um, strings view will show strings that are referenced in the file. So it's dependent on the file format and what the file actually does with uh, these strings. Um, whereas strings.exe, you can apply to any file of any type and strings that are never referenced um, will also appear. Same for the hex editor. Of course, there are some hex editors that read file types and so on, but generally you have just some hex data and some kind of ASCII string view, um, which cannot be fooled if the file type is somewhat awkward, corrupt or whatever. And when you do this, take note of all the interesting areas that you find, the interesting strings that you want to check out later. And when you get stuck, you should, you know, stop, take a break, take a break. Um, maybe discuss with some colleagues or friends uh, your problem or talk to a rubber duck. Um, but this will also, you know, free your mind a bit and then you might get uh, back to checking uh, more like the overview of the file, like uh, the, the surface of the file where you might go and dive deeper into. Um, also, automated analysis sandboxes, they are great. If you if the file on, um, has sandbox detection that detects those sandboxes, um, because you can see already if the file does um, like sandbox injection or similar uh, process injection. So where to, to know where to look for the payload eventually. And um, yeah, last but not least, I would also check out um, like file format viewers before diving into the code. For instance, if you have an MS DOS file, use some kind of um, MS DOS file, <laughs> MS Office file, use some kind of kind of uh, format viewer for that file format, or for PE files, you have PE viewers and so on um, to check out the resources there, for instance. So, yeah, that's it from me. And if you have any other tips to avoid the rabbit holes, please put them in the comments below and let's see you next time.